Hi, I'm Wen Jin. I'm going to talk about COVID Tales, a new series of lino cuts which I have made over the past few months in lockdown. I am an artist that trained as a vet 20 years ago. Veterinary medicine is a practical job. It's full of comical moments, surprising challenges, and interesting clients. After being bitten one time too many, I decided enough was enough. So, in November 2019, I made the jump to a desk job at the Centre for Fine Print Research, University of the West of England, as a researcher. Now, I had to deal with office life and a whole set of new acronyms. I found myself spending lots of time travelling between London and Bristol, catching up on reading and writing. Then, as you all know, the pandemic struck. Suddenly, I felt myself wearing a cloak of potential poison. My breath was a weapon. I had been visiting my father weekly, but now these visits were cancelled and touch was forbidden. I felt very lucky to be living alone just as lockdown happened. I could still drink tea in my kitchen, pondering the world and feel safe in my space. But every evening, scrolling through the headlines, increasingly fearful of what they would bring, I'd stay awake and worry. My studio in East London shut, so I repurposed the corner of the living room as a makeshift printing area. At first, it was really fun. I could work in the bathroom on the floor, if I wanted to, and not wear trousers, and enjoy being at home all day. I could garden at lunchtime, I could cut the lawn with scissors and plant potatoes, and, during spring, I took two weeks to enjoy the blossom. It was a paradise, a leafy haven, but somehow out of step with the feeling of dread that people I loved might get ill. Slowly, the lack of human contact made me feel one-dimensional. It was all too easy to turn off the video and sound during work meetings and sob, without anyone noticing a thing. I made this print when I was missing my family the most. It says, Oh, I wish I could hug you again. I dreamed of a perfect meal that I'd like to share with my dad. It says, If you were here, I'd invite you for lunch. We would have mackerel, grilled quickly, with crushed up cardamom and peppercorns and onions and steamed rice. And for afters, there would be a big bowl of frozen raspberries and ice cream, and we would sit in the sun on the balcony, and a million seconds would pass in a flash. Sometimes, I didn't speak for days. Sometimes, I'd call a friend on video chat and lie to them and say I felt absolutely fine. Sometimes I'd get drunk, really, quite early in the afternoon. Living alone at first felt like a gift. I was so fortunate. I had a job, a place of my own, enough money, and plenty of food. I'd bake a whole tray of chicken in the oven, then sit alone, eating as much as I liked. Truly, I lived in a gilded cage, surrounded by all of my favourite things, safe from the outside world. But after a while, I began to feel like I was trapped inside a bulging and broken bin bag. With no one phoning me from work, I wondered whether emails would finally kill me. I pictured my melted body, slumped at a collapsing desk, and questioned if I'd ever been a valued member of the team. Gradually, my tolerance for the screen increased. The lurching perspectives and detail and magnification were now a bonus. I could zoom around and touch another world. I started to take part in online exercise classes with my phone. Here I am, trying to do wide-arm push-ups, cardio, leg exercises, and a range of moves never attempted before. Like many others, my hair continued to grow, so I got the scissors out, thinking that it would eventually grow back anyway. My lockdown chop is the shortest it's been in 20 years. The multiple reflections in the mirrors 
gave me an illusion that I was in company. And nature was a counterbalance to COVID fears. I started to go running in the area, next to magnificent cherry trees, though I was alarmed when I managed to scare another lady on the street. The tree outside my bathroom window burst into flower too. I used to sit there, drinking tea, hoping that everyone I knew would remain healthy. Finally, the companionship of my orchids and flowers have sustained me through this time. I would put the orchid blossoms close to my cheeks to feel their energy, to feel watched by another living being. When being in solitude all got too much, I went back to the local clinic to help out on Saturday shifts and to remind myself of what it is like to live in a dangerous, unpredictable, comical and rewarding world. So, thank you for listening to this talk. I wish you all remain healthy and that we will meet soon. Thank you.